Welcome to uh, the first of our digital solutions, not digital signage, <laughs> digital solutions track um, sessions. We've got um, five sessions lined up over the course of the next three days. Uh, and you see the topics there. Um, and so just in terms of the, uh, the overall flow, um, we, we talk about getting more buyers and getting the attention of more buyers so that we can steal market share from you. So we're gonna talk about how we can be aggressive and impressive out at the edge. I don't know if that's what anybody else calls it. I'm calling it the edge. It's pre-funnel stuff. It gets people to our funnel. How do we get more attention and engagement um, down the funnel? Uh, that's the topic today. Then uh, the two sessions tomorrow will be, I would say, top to mid funnel. And the three keywords I've got there are virtualization, visualization, and interactivity. Then we will uh, dive once again deeply into Digital Design Center on the customer experience and option sales maximization piece. And then we will talk about a critical topic on uh, to close out that is the blending of digital, in-person, and virtual. We've got a blended world here. We have to understand strengths and weaknesses. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, I will not be moderating the session. We'll have Anya Chris Anthon doing it because I have a, an emergency from a sick presenter, so I'll be talking about tech and the finishes and personalization, but otherwise I will be your host or anchor for all of these sessions. So, click, 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 happen. There we go. So again, um, getting folks into the funnel is our main charge here. We're gonna highlight tools and tactics for getting that done. Um, our presenters in alphabetical order, not in uh, spatial order. <laughs> Greg Bray down at the corner is, uh, he's the president of Blue Tangerine, which is a broad-based digital marketing consultancy and agency for the home building industry. Lots of different tool sets uh, that he takes advantage of. Then we've got Robert Cows, who's the president and uh, CEO of Smart Touch Interactive. And um, we've got uh, Meredith. Oops, Mina, where are you? There you are. Okay, you're down the line there. <laughs> but uh, um, it's out of order. But Meredith, um, alphabetically, is the director or VP of digital strategy for Shea Homes. And uh, we've seen her at a number of events over the years. Thanks for coming, Meredith, and uh, sharing. And then uh, we've got Kadra Evans, who you've heard from earlier in the day in our um, executive forum, who's the Director of Industry Relations for New Construction, Zillow. And then finally, Mina. Uh, not mine, we had the mine presentation, but this is Mina <laughs> from uh, Oda Studio. So the flow is gonna be, Kadra and I are gonna have a little uh, chat here about uh, and it's by the numbers, uh, what's going on with on online home shopping uh, and the buyers. Uh, Meredith's gonna showcase Shay's way of being aggressive and impressive uh, on Zillow in particular. Uh, Mina will um, showcase some enhancements, some newer enhancements to listings. Robert's gonna talk about netting more buyers uh, with some case studies with search, geofencing and retargeting. And then Greg will kind of take us a little bit down the funnel from a search to the initial engagement on the website and getting folks flowing down. So, and then we've got, if we've got time, we've got some uh, tips for the digital edge that all of the panelists put forward. So that's our flow. So this is our conversation. This is um, a look at some statistics that were provided uh, that are about uh, the percentage of shoppers and then actual buyers that are um, viewing um, online listings, real estate listings, new home listings, et cetera. And I think, you know, this is hopefully something that people are, are understanding the very high percentages of shoppers and buyers that are either starting their journey online or eventually making it online to a listing service to take that in. So do you wanna speak to that? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting to look at, so you, you can see those dark blue uh, lines on the graph. That's kind of your, 
how buyers are starting their shopping experience. Then if you look at the lighter blue, that's in hindsight, how many buyers actually used online services and it's, I mean, it's nearly 100% across all generations, even across boomers and then the silent generation, which right. is, is the next oldest. So what that says to me, and we talked about this a little bit this morning, if new construction, if builders want to win eyeballs, it starts right here. So maybe a buyer drives by a community and they are interested. Well, then where do they go to follow up? They go online and then they start their home search there. So in order to win those eyeballs, it's critical that you're doing it from the beginning of the journey. And silent generation is between greatest generation and baby boomers or? I, I yeah. think the silent generation and the greatest generation might be the same. Oh, okay. They became they became silent. It's later. only silent in the fact that they're really not technology forward. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But I could be wrong. And then Good question. I think this is a really important slide to look at, which is the well, it's important to Zillow for sure. Uh, it's the percentage <laughs> of um, monthly visitors, and it's the number of monthly visitors in mil, uh, millions, and kind of how that breaks out. And you guys almost have 50% of of the traffic of the different real estate listing services, and. Um, you know, we saw that most buyers are either starting or eventually making it to these online listing services. And you could see how the eyeballs are distributed here. So my, my point would be, if you want to get their attention, you got to be, you got to be playing in that space. Absolutely. I that's a Absolutely. And I think there's a lot to be said for, there's a lot of comparisons between what Zillow is doing for the consumer experience and what builders should be doing for the consumer experience. We have a, we have a core value at Zillow that's consumers are our North Star. So everything that we do, everything that we develop is so that we can delight consumers online in that shopping experience. And that should be what everybody is doing, because if you don't, then they're going elsewhere. They're going to the next best thing who's providing that experience for them. So that's, that's how we remain where we are as far as market share. So this is digging in a little bit more on your platform a lot in more. terms of uh, yeah, what, <laughs> what works. Do you, do you want to take us on a little tour through these data I, points? I wish these were my numbers. We've got some very smart data scientists at Zillow, uh, and they have found some pretty interesting things as far as photo count, how many characters should be in your listing descriptions. I mean, we could get real data driven here, but uh -huh. we're going to give it a high level. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so you need more than 10 photos on, on your listings, plain right. and simple. Um, 20 to 50 is kind of optimal, especially if you're right. competing with resales. And, you know, after 50, after 50 photos, the, the returns are kind of diminishing. So don't yep. worry about getting more than 50 photos on your right. listings. Right. <laughs> uh, but but we then, heard, we've heard yeah. from, from Ken at Shea that his take was the average new home listing only at three images, at least as of last year. And then the average yeah. existing used home was at 35. So I, I've been using the expression where we unilaterally surrender at the first point of contact with the buyers. So if, if we're gonna be in the place where most of the eyeballs are, we better do a better job there. Yeah, or there's a picture of you know a half completed house with the dirt yard in front, they're not compelling images, so you right. have to figure out a way to bring those eyeballs to your right. listings. And then you have a lot of stuff. Um, There's so many things. Yeah. We don't have to go line by line. You guys can read and take okay. pictures. Uh, but let, yes. Let's talk about this because I know this is um, really important. Um, the rich, rich media. media. Rich, we, it, at Zillow, we call it a rich media experience, meaning that you've got more than just listing photos on your listings. You've got 3D tours. Interactive floor plans are a must, especially for new construction homes. If you, can, if, if you can't see and feel and touch a home in person, then you have to be able to do it online. Um, and the data is showing that this, this stuff works. So 68% more views on listings that have 3D homes, have 3D tours. 36% uh, more saves. This, these are significant numbers, especially when we're talking about this more limited buyer pool that we've got in this more challenging market. Consumer, we do consumer housing trends reports every year, survey thousands of, of home buyers, sellers, renters, and they're telling it, buyers are telling us that they're wasting time on properties that don't meet their criteria because there's not this rich media experience online. So they're, they're spinning their wheels on properties that ultimately are not just a good fit. So 
guess who else's time they're wasting besides their own? Yours. <laughs> so it's really important to just give them all the information they need from first glance and then take them through the journey from there. And then I put this question in here, and I don't know what, if you know the answer, but are the builders uh, showing floor plan flexibility in their listings? If this is such an important factor, somebody's disqualifying based on a floor plan, but there's multiple plans available, are we showing that? You options. know, we have some experts on home building listings that I work with that are not on this stage that might know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, we'll find well, them out. Well, maybe those. Meredith will tell us what she is. <laughs> yeah, Meredith. In that do you have an answer for that? Yeah. I do. If you are sh if you are sending your interactive floor plan, Zillow will accept that, and then it should work to show the different options. Okay. Well, why don't we then go ahead and transition to you? You've been really working hard on this platform <laughs> okay. to impress and engage. So tell sure. us what you're doing. All right, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about um, what we're doing at Shea on Zillow. And I will say when we talk about aggressive, I'm going to say over the last year, maybe we've been a little lazy because we have not had to be as aggressive. Um, but we really saw our numbers online and in our online sales department start coming down in April. So it was really important to us that we get back on track with things. And one of the things you said earlier in your presentation was back to the basics on steroids. And that's where we're trying to get back to with all of these listings. So, um, you know, we were hesitant, I will say, to adopt Zillow when they separated off from BDX. Um, it was another expense. Is it going to work? Are we going to have results? And I, I think one of the things we were concerned of is when you look at these numbers, and these are just the numbers from Q3 of 2022, how many people are actually going to Zillow and looking for new homes? How many are looking at their estimate? How many are looking at their neighbor's estimate? I think Zillow definitely gets a lot of traffic, but are they getting the traffic that we need to our community? So we were a little hesitant, but we decided to go forward and try and, and really see what happened. And the beauty of online is you can monitor everything. So one of the things I love about online is you can see your results in days, you can pull levers, you can change things and make that up. And how would you not want to be on a platform that has so much exposure and brand recognition? I see the Zillow commercials. They're very warm. They're very friendly. They speak to you. We don't have the money to post, uh, to do those national ad campaigns. So it's just brand recognition and getting out there and very top of funnel. So for our strategy, what we did was an all-in approach. And our strategy really is any community that has homes to sell is on Zillow. It's nice that we have the choice and not every single community is required to be there under a contract, but they are all there if they have homes to sell. So when we had communities that we didn't have home availability in or were on big, huge priority lists, we would take them down as we needed to, but then we just add them back up when we do. Um, that's for promoted communities, which with Zillow is kind of the, the way you get in. You do your promoted communities. There's also some other nice features with builder boosts and featured communities, which are really giving your communities that need that little extra kick some help. We love having that option, but we allow our divisions to just pick that as needed. So we're not boosting everything, we're not featuring everything, we're just there you know, as needed to, to boost our results. Uh, Is that controlled at the corporate level or divisional level? Do they so we have a feed from our website that sends everything to Zillow. And, you know, when we were overwhelmed with traffic, we'd have divisions just say, hey, shut it off and turn it back on and shut it off and turn it back on. So they have the say into whether it's on or off. So they have a cost allocation yeah. and they're involved in that. Yep. yep. But we do, we pay for everything out of our national budget, which somewhere down the line of finances gets allocated out to everyone. So, um, but our, really our top thing with Zillow was awareness. We wanted to make sure that we were there. Um, I'll call them the home people. Back on my first slide, I said be where the shoppers are, but it's really a lot of people. It's home people. They're interested in homes. They're looking. Maybe they're not shopping now, but they could be someday. Um, however, paying a lot of money for awareness is difficult. You need to be able to show your ROI. So we also look at traffic and want to understand how much traffic we're getting from Zillow, and we do look at conversion. So while this topic is awareness, top of the funnel, we do measure it the whole way down to make sure we're getting results from being on Zillow. So results, when we talk about those, Zillow was our number one source of referral traffic to our website in Q3. Consistently throughout the year, it's in the top three, usually the one, top one or two. So that means people are clicking on our community listings on Zillow, and they're coming to SheaHomes.com. 
Our cost per lead is under $100, so we're getting a good cost per lead for the leads that are signing up on Zillow. I think it's probably a little bit less and we have a little bit more leads because we're not great at multi-attribution tracking. So I think some of the people that come to Shea Homes from Zillow sign up as leads, but then they're listed as Shea Homes. And then for sales, our lead to sale, out of all of the third-party sites, and you saw on Kadra's slide, the other slides they, com they compete with, they're our top lead to sale. So we have the top conversion from lead to sale with Zillow. And the competitors in terms of source are the other listed So we look at new home source, search, we or? look at realtor.com. Yeah, so they're our top three out of those, what we consider our third-party sites that we send feeds out to that gotcha. list our communities. Gotcha. Great question. And then future initiatives, I mentioned we haven't been aggressive. We've already started a content audit. You saw the long list of things that were shown as how to get your community showing the best on Zillow. Some of our communities do. Some of our communities don't have all the things we need. The team that you work with at Zillow is great at providing you that information and showing you where you need to you know, focus and get your listings improved. Uh, we are implementing self tour booking. So we do have a self-tour option in our models for customers to be able to come in when we're closed. We will be allowing customers to book that through Zillow. Um, and the great thing about that is we do then get all that information and can follow up with the customer because they'll be using our um, self-tour vendor, which is uTour. And then the inline community preview map or the ICP map. So on Zillow, a new home builder is going to show up as one little dot, just like all of the other resale homes. We don't want to show up as one little dot because we have lots of little dots in our community. We could have 100. We could have 300. So we're working on implementing across all of our communities the inline community preview map, which you can see on the screen, shows all of our lots. And if you send the availability data, it'll have the little red dots, and you'll have lots of red dots instead of just one, giving us more awareness throughout the site. And that's a special Zillow feature, or is that? It is. Okay. You can work with, um, I'm going to not say the other word, Zonda Virtual, uh, uh, <laughs> new named Zonda Virtual, they will create that inline community preview map with you and then you can send it over to Zillow, get it loaded up and good to go. Gotcha. That's it for me. That's it? Okay. That's it. Mina, why don't you take the clicker? You're going to show us some new uh, visualization tools that integrate well on listings, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and I actually, Tell us a little bit about your, your company because you guys are relative sure. newcomers, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm one of the co-founders of Oda. And um, what we do is we use machine learning to enhance photos and make them convert faster. Basically, that's the bottom line. And I'll, I'll show some examples. Um, okay. But I actually kind of want to um, tie it back to the first um, slides that you presented regarding you know, the online presence and how people are actually searching online. And um, I thought that was very um, important especially from like actually thinking about that that person that you're trying to attract at the first point like you're talking about someone waiting for their coffee at starbucks right like or someone waiting for the subway that's that's actually when they have a couple minutes to just pull up their phone and look through the options and that's when people find the homes that they want to you know go and see in person potentially um so it's very important to kind of like, that's the level ground where you start engaging those people. Um, and it's at that point, um, the photos are very important. Yeah. Um, hey, so, Nina, can I interrupt you for absolutely. one second? What, what kind of percentage of your traffic is from mobile devices versus oh, desktop? Is it it's, vast majority? Yes, I, I would say that mobile, mobile is our first priority in everything right. that we do. So these small screen experiences wants, are really Yeah, if you important. make me go to a desktop, you're, it's not going to happen. You have to be able to do it on your phone. Yeah. And the yeah. on the phone experience is much shorter in duration than sitting down at the desktop, right? Right, yeah. and, and you're not yeah. always around a desktop, but your phone is attached. I'm yeah. around the yeah. desktop too much. <laughs> Me too, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, um, that's why I kind of want to emphasize the photos because they're so fast and easy to consume, um, and you can get so much information from them, um, and they're easy to kind of skim through. Like, you don't, you don't have yeah. to spend five minutes. You can actually just look at them for a minute, and then you have a lot of information if, if you have the photos in the first place. Um, and that's what people usually want to see. Um, we've seen this in our research and also others' research. Most people find the photos very useful, and that's what they want to see. And when I say photos, I'm talking specifically about the property photo. So not just a model, but actually the one that 
people might potentially buy or interested in um, seeing. And um, I did a little bit of research just kind of to see, you know, the websites of people in the room and what, what, what's there. Um, and it's, I've seen, the photos I've seen were mostly for models. Um, and, and I think there's like a huge potential of actually completing that, um, the assets and adding them there. Because once, once you have the photos, the new machine learning technologies can do so much more with them. So you have the photos, you have the floor plans, and all of a sudden you're able to show so much more with just those. Um, the, the Are you going to show us how much I more will. you can show? Yes. Cool. <laughs> I know this is, this is like a build up. Um, yeah, just kind of um, to show. Enough with the suspense. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, the grand reveal. Um, yeah, so here you're seeing an example um, of the floor plan and the photos, and the photos are virtually staged. And you're seeing th the staging is also customized, right? So you can see how that space would look for a family versus for someone who works from home. You can do pets. You can do all kinds of different versions, which actually what, what happens when you do this is you're basically sh shifting the conversation. Like you're at the first engagement point. You're having the person ask, the question isn't, do I want to buy this house, yes or no? The question is like, oh, like how would this space actually work for me? Like, would this, like, would my kids' room actually fit into this space? It kind of looks like what I'm seeing in this photo, right? Yeah. So this is the very first contact that you have with the prospect, and you're already having them think about um, what what that space might might and, look like. And that swipe happens automatically, or is that controlled? That is, yeah, that the user can, uh, the okay. user's able to kind of play with okay. it, and um, you'll see a customer example here, okay. um, where instead of just the floor plan, um, they, they can play with the sliders and see the space unfurnished and furnished, right. um, and then also click on the floor plan to just kind of walk around. So they have a sense of the space, and then they have a sense of And, and what isn't part of your secret sauce, and I don't know whether I'm preempting your later pre presentation of it, but it's the machine learning, the, the AI, whatever we want to call it, yeah. is you, makes it easy for you to generate lots of different alts exactly. that from a yeah. furnishing perspective, Absolutely, right? yeah. The quality, the, um, the, the options, the customization, all of that is available yeah. um, using a lot of the new um, machine learning models. And right. the, the, um, the technology is very recent and very, it's a very exciting time in the AI um, like visual space. And um, what feeds the AI? So is the AI derived based on user's journey or what? Um, a little yeah. bit of all. So there's a lot of things you can do depending on the, the, um, what you're trying to achieve there. So right now when we have a user who comes to us, we do have a massive um, database and a lot of different assets that we are able to use to generate a lot of different versions of the photos, which then you can use and understand what your prospects are interested in, which which versions they might want to actually see um, on their So you site. can A-B test this stuff. Exactly. And you can deploy exactly. different looks and feels for different types yes. of customers. Yes. And that is what so you, is this all capability or are you doing this for some users? So only? this is, yeah, so this is an example from, as I said, from a customer's website. Um, we, we are working um, with a lot of um, users right now. Um, and this is the, um, the capability that I showed you so far is what we have available. Um, what I'm going to show you on the next and final slide is where this technology is going. Um, so the, the options that you saw um, in those slides were, you know, pre pre selected basically. And where we're going is actually what you see here is um, the user is instantly able to generate those different options depending on what they might want to see. So this is instant staging, instant virtual staging. We're talking about. Um, and this is something we're developing right now. And what this means is you're, you're basically having an AI designer for every prospect. Like that's at the very top of the funnel, like people are looking at the photos of your space and then they're able to start thinking about what can I do with this space? How would it work for me? 
Um, so it's very exciting. <laughs> and um, as so I said, how like, do you all study this stuff? How do you know that it works? <clears throat> um, this is, these are MIT educated folks yes. who are coming up with this stuff. <laughs> so like you studied it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm one of the three co-founders, um, and um, my partner, who's uh, my co-founder, who's our CTO, is actually was working in autonomous driving prior to starting this company with us. And um, we, what made us realize is you know, there's so much potential um, in the real estate space that is not really being used by just kind of leveraging all the existing technologies. So um, that's kind of how we started um, experimenting using these different models. And as I said, like th this space is just very, um, very like ripe for like change and innovation. Um, so all of this is coming, like in a month, I'll be showing other things, you know? It's kind of like we, we, we got a little bit of a furnishing and decor theme that's, you know, kind of a, a, a emerged here. And it, but that's really about living, right? It's, it's people imagining living instead of looking at a space, right? And that, exactly. that is what's driving engagement. I don't, I'm, I'm asking you. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yes. I mean, it's, that's what drives the engagement. That's what gets them to spend the time on our site. And you know, as tough as it is right now with the interest rates and all that messaging out there about don't buy a home right now, you know, once a customer gets emotionally attached and see themselves living in the home, they'll strive for the financial and they'll look at those programs. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's key. And in a resale home or a used home where you can see that, you can see the furniture, you can picture yourself. If you just look at an empty room, it's not yeah. going to add that same Well, it's kind of sales you. 101 to make people want it, to have the emotional thrive on it before they get to all the rational stuff about financing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That was a great presentation. Thank you want to pass the, Absolutely. Uh, the clicker to Robert? Robert, take it away. Hi, John. Thanks for inviting me. <clears throat> I'm Robert Kowitz with Smart Touch Interactive. I started the company in 2010 with the sole mission of helping builders and developers generate demand for their homes and, and master plan communities. And today, um, we have the fortune of serving over 100 um, builders and developers throughout the country. And we tout ourselves as being the only full service marketing and advertising agency that happens to also offer its own CRM and marketing automation solution with expertise on implementation. So that gives us a lot of view and a lot of different tactics. Today, I'm here to talk about one of our, our probably our, what you would call a most special um, tactics as it regards to geofencing and, and geotargeting. So um, as it regards to like strategy and where we have geotargeting historically for us, and I don't know why it may be uh, advancing, but historically for us, geotargeting has happened as a disruption. And today, like right after the pandemic, we had this concept of IDFA. Maybe this is helping me speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's our AI. That we yeah, we learned that we really speed it up. Form in the AI so this concept, uh, how many of you folks have heard of this concept of IDFA for geotargeting? Can I get a raise of hands? So ID for marketers. So every phone right now in this room has an ID. When you turn on location services, right, that is how Google is able to capture an ID. To conserve your privacy, like they're not able to um, offer the identity by name, right? But every phone has a phone ID. And when you spend enough money with Google, they are able to <laughs> offer <coughs> these IDFAs. Note to self, call Google about sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, that means you as a company are spending more than six figures. And through the help through of one of our ad exchanges, we are able to facilitate this concept of IDFA, which is very similar to geotargeting, geofencing, where people have historically put a geofence, commonly known in the new home business as typically putting it around model homes, one of the most uh, sought about tactics. But this concept today, like especially with the market, with renters being a, a target, neighborhoods, apartments, and so forth, the concept is to you put the geofence around a lot of our clients today, um, geofence employers, geofence churches, not just competitors, supermarkets, targeted ethnicities, schools, et cetera. But the concept is to utilize, now that we've had all these challenges with like the social media audiences and the shakeup that we have in, in managing those audiences, to be able to, to deliver strategic 
messages to people based on the geographic location of where they're currently or where we found those lists. So those lists are pulled retroactively. We typically pull them for a 15 day period and we change targets every 15 days. The most successful tactic, and if I, I can go back on this, right? So you can grab this list and upload it into your Facebook campaign, into your Twitter, into Instagram, into Google, and actually use that as your targeted audience. So those audiences for, for us have resulted in a high engagement, much double, double the high, double the number, double the results of the number of our, what is usually our most powerful list, which is our retargeting list. Or somebody who's viewed videos, gone to our website multiple times. This list, when chosen, when choosing the, the right targets, right, so they're relevant to your offer, the community that you're offering, and you also customize the ads to that audience, which is a very critical factor, is to customize the ads and not just use what you're using across every, every other audience, then you are, you're likely to get right now, based on our results, 2x the results. So you're, you're using a community-based institution of some, some sort, where you think the folks within that geography who are traveling to that geography would be good targets. That's how you're creating a retargeting universe? Am I understanding it? Yes, they, we have selected locations. Yeah. So this, this case study that I'm gonna show you here, yep. this happens to be um, one of our clients in um, South Houston. It's a thousand uh, master plan acre community in South Houston. Bro Granite 2016, 2,200 homes, they've delivered 1,100. I'm just giving you a general idea of the subscriptions and a budget for that, which is around $1,500. And then they spend another $1,000 a month targeting those audiences on Facebook. And so in this case, we're targeting an employer, which in their, in their case is the Houston Medical Center. They have evidence over the years collected by, by the Zonda folks that have demonstrated that a good portion of their, of their buyers, as a matter of fact, 30% of their buyers come from the medical center. And so they also just recently opened a toll road that provides connectivity. So that is one of our prime targets and we're able to pill a very big list of employers and put an offer that's specific to medical center employers. And that is one of the keys is customizing the message. Yes, it costs more. Yes, it's a little more effort, but the results are much better. Right, and then for example, the other ones are our competitor. So there are several, there are three master plan communities. Each one has about seven builders. So their master plan, all of those model homes in those model parks are the one, our primary targets. And then probably my favorite ones is a church. There is a Baptist church that is across the street from the community that, that is full of, of, of residents that participate in there. And so we have ha have evidence over the last 24 months since running these tactics that we have captured buyers from the church that were first seen, that were first obtained from, from uh, participating there through this geofencing tactic. So we find that, that this, and for example, this is our, our funnel strategy. And so using like regular traditional like retargeting audiences, we like to, when possible, when budgets allow, to serve our video ads to the general audience. Like we believe that uh, they're advertising as much as we wanna be laser focused and this is a funnel. We also wanna be relevant to when people have not started even thinking about this in the marketplace. So when they do enter the marketplace, they recognize our brands. Mm -hmm. So video for us has a lot of purposes, but it's not the primary lead generation tactic. We, we want to capture people to view our, view our, our video spots and at least watch 95% of the video. Yeah. With that, then we're able to send them a more aggressive, um, a more aggressive piece of advertisement. So for example, this is our, our video ad advertisements. Right, and you see the engagement, 28,000 views, but only nine landing page. However, that is now my audience. The people that watch 95% are now my audience to my next more aggressive ad, which is what we call our carousel ads. And for a master plan community, which typically has seven, seven or eight builders in many cases, a lot of the ones that we do have that many, um, we've got to feature not just the lifestyle, but as well as all of the different builders and their shots. And so this kind of gives us this, these cards for, uh, for uh, the carousel ads actually gives us the ability to provide kind of equal opportunity. So that's our, our, our second tactic, which typically will drive people to the website and then our third, which we're able to utilize for these IDFA audiences, because I don't necessarily, based on the location, 
I can put an offer in front of them and get them to subscribe to my offer just because it was interesting and it was very relevant, right? And that's why it's so important for the message to be different. So quite often, we will send our audiences that we've built with the video and the sponsors ads to our landing page where at that same audience of IDFA that we got from those locations, we'll send to the lead gen ad. And so we're very successful. So when comparing the results, we've actually, this is the, the Pomona case study from our, our fall quarterly marketing results review. And so you can see there, I don't, I don't think I have a pointer there, but you can see that our cost per lead for the FEA list is actually half of our cost per lead for the remarketing, which is still a very, very good cost per lead. But this just gives you an idea of how powerful these lists can be. And it is a solution that we are finding more and more common for our, our clients that are having challenges managing their audiences with Facebook. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Thanks for that's that it. unique look. Let's pass it on to Greg. There, go, Greg. there we go. All right. Well, I just uh, appreciate all the stuff uh, that I've heard as it's all rolled downhill. <laughs> so I, I appreciate the, hopefully to kind of pull some of it together just from a, from a funnel capture standpoint, right? Because all of this at the end of the day is capturing leads. That's what we're after. We want leads. Um, of course, on Zillow, you can get leads directly, uh, but most of the time, all these efforts are pushing people into your website. That's, that's really the goal of all of these various activities. And so pondering what is it that this target person that we've now gotten to click, what is it that they're trying to do as soon as they come to our website? Think about your own idea. You're, you're looking at this Google search results list, everything else. What is it that they're trying to do on that initial thing? So again, simple search, new homes in Atlanta, you know, 247 million results, okay? <laughs> Am I gonna get through that by dinner? You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, isn't it? So they're trying to eliminate you. Their number one goal is to say, this doesn't apply, I can move on. All right, when they come to your site. That's the first thing. Think about how you search. All right, you're trying to say, does this have what I'm looking for? Is this what I'm really after? Um, I, I don't have time to process all this information. They're trying to eliminate you. They're just overwhelmed. That, that resonates with what she was saying about floor plans and eliminating because the floor plan's not right. Yeah, so, it, 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 so. it's gonna apply in any type yeah. of search scenario, even if they're searching within Zillow, right? And, not, and, and they're just looking at the different categories. Again, does this have, and, and what do you give them? Like two seconds to figure that out, right, or less. Building Does this shorts. have what, what I need, right? So what is it that then causes people to eliminate you? And I've, I've broken it down into kind of three emotions. We talked about emotional connection, right? There's a negative side to emotions too, right? The, the negative emotion piece, right? If they don't trust us, if they get frustrated, or if they're not sure what to do, then they move on. They're not, they're not gonna fight it and, and work on it. So what are some of the things that cause that mistrust? course, if it looks like your, you know, cousin's nephew's um, third grader designed your website, you know, it, it's probably not going to pull it. If, if they can't find what they're looking for, if they can tell that it's out of date, all right, if your last blog article was three years ago, okay, you've got a problem of trust, all right. Um, I only say that because I've seen it, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's all about creating that, that idea of is what I'm seeing here match what I'm seeing in other places, all right? And there's also this idea of social proof, which is a conversation a little beyond the time we have today, but, but what they see about you in other places doesn't match what they're reading about you on your website. All right, so we've got this trust issue. Um, and then frustration. We're all users, we don't, we don't it's only in the computer world that we call our, our customers users in the drug world, right? Those are the only two places <laughs> that we use that term, right? But, but we're all users of, of websites, right? What gets you upset, okay? When you're watching the thing spin, all right, okay? How long do you wait? How long do you wait? And, and do you actually look at some of those statistics on your site? Here's, here's one of the dirty little secrets in looking at page load times in Google Analytics. The really slow pages, they quit before the tag fired and actually recorded the visit. Okay, so it doesn't even make it into your report. The really slow pages. All right, that's, that's the little secret. You can only depend on that so, so long. You need to do some other testing too. Uh, they get frustrated when they can't find what they're looking for. They don't know what to do next. All of these things lead to frustration. Again, 
I don't have time for this. I got 247 million other sites to look at. I got to move on. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I got I got information. If I don't have the information I need, if I try to ask and I don't get responses back, I move on. All of this. Um, you know, this is this is from the 2019 Zillow report. Great stuff, by the way. Thanks for doing all that and sharing it. Um, there there may be some newer data here, right? But but we've kind of talked about this idea that. Uh, 64 percent said they would consider new homes but only nine percent end up buying a new home versus a used home that's a huge market opportunity okay so the question then is what stops them what are some of the things they said well some say they couldn't understand what the home would look like we've talked about photos we've talked about you know floor plans all of those things they talk about pricing as a concern timing how long it's going to take to get the home all right the hassles well this is going to be longer and more painful all right, all of these things are ways that we need to build that trust, remove the uncertainty by giving them the information that they need as they're looking for it. And again, that can happen on some of these other third-party platforms as well, not just on your website, but it's this education idea. How do we keep them moving through without getting stuck? All right, so just a few quick keys to kind of help with that lead conversion, because at the end of the day, getting them to the website, if we don't get their name an email or a phone number or some way to contact them, we, we haven't accomplish the goal. Now, they don't always do it on the first visit. That would be nice. But, but the reality is if we don't do that, we haven't done it. So just a few quick, few quick keys here, all right? If you look at your analytics and look at the report that talks about the entry points into your website, I bet you would find, if you're kind of average, that somewhere in that 20, 25%, your top entry point is gonna be your homepage, 20, 25% of your sessions. And so what does that mean? It means 75 to 80 percent of your website visitors started on a page other than your homepage. But yet we focus on the journey as if everybody starts on the homepage and then they click on the community and then they click on the model and then they and then they fill out the contact form because they can't wait to move in tomorrow. All right. But the reality is 80 percent of them are starting somewhere else. So you need to look at that somewhere else page as what is the message of this is the first and only thing that they see. All right, and not only that, we actually want them to start other places if that has the content they're looking for, right? Google's job as a search engine is to get them as close to the answer to their question as possible. If you on your Zillow listings are sending everybody to your homepage, you're missing an opportunity, all right? The community listing needs to be sending people to the community page with that URL that you upload. If you send everybody to the homepage, you're making them have to start over again. They've already narrowed it down to I want homes in this area and maybe this style get them to that area and that style when they click through, all right? Every page needs to be a starting point. You make sense? All right, next idea here, maybe. Click, all right. Um, we have to remember that people don't know this stuff the way that we do. They don't buy a home every day. Maybe they do it a couple, three times in their lifetime, okay? It's not something that is a common experience for our buyers. We have to show them the way, and that also includes what am I supposed to do on this website? How do I move them through? We got them to the site, that's great. We want them to fill out the form. Do we tell them that? Do we ask them to? Do we pull them through, guide them through the process? Oh, you've selected a community. Hey, now look at these homes. Is it clear what they're supposed to do next? Provide the guide. And in today's world, we've got to quit being gatekeepers on our content and data. We've got to tell them everything, everything up front. All right, and I know some of the salespeople are like, no, but then they'll have no reason to talk to me. They will because they won't remember it all, okay? They will because it'll make sense to us, but it might not make sense to them. But we've got to give them all the information. When people don't have what they're looking for, they move on. They're not there. This is one of the keys is they need to feel transparency, openness, willingness to share and talk about it. And then the last one is you got to make it easy to connect. All right, this is Big phone numbers. We talked about mobile, right? If your phone number's all the way in the footer, <laughs> on the, on, all right, it needs to be pinned to that header or pinned as a, a little footer bar on, on mobile. You gotta make it easy to find. And why in the world, when someone's holding a device that's designed to make a phone call, do we make them fill out a form and have to type in 20 fields instead of making it easy to actually use the device for what it's for? With this big number, they can just tap with their thumb and it starts ringing somebody, okay? Use phones for what they're good for, especially on these mobile things. Make it easy to connect. All right. Oh, I went too far here. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So um, we want to put some of this stuff to work in 
2023. So I asked the panelists, Robert, I didn't get yours yet, but you can sound off on it. Sure. But for their top tips to make a difference on the edge in 2023, Kedra. I mean, it's pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> Rich media content, make your listings look good. That's, it. That's the only way you're gonna win eyeballs. Mm -hmm. And you could do that in 2023, right? There's all the tools. This I, is not a hard I thing to do, right? I have never seen an easier time to adopt technology. Mm -hmm. That could be Meredith, nice. there's different styles here between yeah. Meredith and Kedra. Yeah. Uh, there's some, I guess mine was a little more long-winded, but it's <laughs> the same answer. Um, content, I think just content is key, whether it be written, video, uh, rich media, whatever it is, customers are going to need to convince themselves that now is a good time to buy because they're hearing from everyone else that it's not, and they're going to need to fall in love with that home to strive for the ability to do that. So just anything that you can do to educate them and to help them feel comfortable moving forward is, is really going to be key. Yeah, I was going to ask Robert if you have in your um, IDFA um, was that the right acronym? Correct. Okay. Um, do you promote the value of a new home versus a used house at all? Does that messaging come through? Because you're, and you've got some broad universes that are lightly qualified, right? That you're communicating with. Or is that integral in your message? That, that's you part of the message if we're targeting an existing community. So it's not uncommon for our builders to be developing a community that's adjacent to an existing community where you have buyers that have been there for many years that like the location, are already bought on that, and would prefer to be that. So we throw those kinds of messages. And out. are you able to diagnose the specific weaknesses of that neighboring used house community so that you can, again, be relevant on that? In the sense of diagnosis, like, hey, be more. Yeah, you know that you know they, they have X Y Z maintenance problem, or um, were the floor plans were cramped, or I don't know what you know, what the factors were. Yeah, I don't know whether you get that <laughs> level of business <laughs> intelligence. That not to that level. Yeah, not to that level. But but our our offers typically the ones that are going to resonate is you like the location, it's time for a move up, or it's time for a new home. Yeah. So it's 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 tying it to new. Yeah. Right. And improving. Yep. All right, Mina, we need to hear from you, but it can't be about uh, photos and <laughs> so. What else is uh, left? What else <laughs> is there in the world? <laughs> that's how it is when you're in a startup like that, right? It's just like, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Just get how about, content? let's talk about applying uh, your, um, your technology. I mean, is there a tip for fast implementation that you think could make a difference in 2023? Yeah, well, the implementation is fast. I think it's more about like what I said about getting the photos of the actual property, even if they don't look great, even if they're not, you know, just getting like starting with that is just going to get you ahead. And why do you think that makes such a big difference versus models? and? Because people want to see the actual like physical space that they're going to move into and the models like, don't really cut it unfortunately anymore okay. they're yeah Go ahead. robert did you have something because i asked you to just opine on something else but oh to add for 2023 um, so, some sort of quick hitter that you think would make a difference in terms of uh, maybe maybe it's idfa i mean I, well, I don't know whether you think that's a quick hitter or not Yes, it is. If, if you are already investing in social media advertisement and you're having challenges with audiences, I would highly encourage you to consider experimenting with the IDFA as an audience based on a specific geolocation and coupled with customizing the ad to the audience. That, that, that is a solution right now that has deemed to be effective and proving great results for our clients. Greg. I kind of hit on this in my presentation, but this idea of transparency, when, when you talk about the simple question of how much will this home cost, why is that so hard for us to answer? Is it, well, I get why, because they can do all these different things and, you know, and also, hey, the supplies might change tomorrow and you know, all, all these challenges that come along with that. But when you look at what a resale home is, there's a number, it's there. Right. You know, and it's I can understand it and I can yeah. process it. And so this idea uh, and especially as we move toward this idea of actually selling homes completely online, which we're on the cusp of and, and some are doing, you got to have a number. 
So we got to figure out how do we get to that number? How do we share that and get comfortable with that idea? Well, you talked a lot about trust. And this is this like top of the list in terms of earning trust? Because if you're hiding the price on somebody's biggest purchase from them, that's, yeah. that's got to be. Or, or it says starting from, home starting from 490, but you really can't get in for six, less than 600, you know? I mean, unless you'd like just have the shell that, you know, is empty or something. But, but yet we do that a lot in our marketing, don't we? Gotcha. All right. Well, um, believe it or not, we got through it on time. We got back on time. <laughs> so I want to thank Zillow New Construction and Kadra because you're actually the sponsor of this session Thanks and you, you decided not to have a pitch, but you got a lot of information through anyway, right? Yep. And if you need a pitch, we've got experts right back there. <laughs> Wait, guys. Um, and they'll be kind of milling about this. So if you have questions on what we do, what we sell, how we can help you, they are the experts. They'll be in the expo hall tomorrow and Wednesday. You can answer everything from the expert point of view. In booth number 207. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then thanks to all the panelists. Great job, everybody. Every, everybody had a little different flavor and a good tip to I really appreciate it.